Hi everybody, this video is going to tell you about the new updates to our package, Memo Boot R, that um, will now run moderation with and without covariates for you for continuous variables, categorical variables coming soon. So in this example, we're going to use some pre-built-in data in R, but I wanted to start with a visualization of moderation. So moderation is the interaction between X and M as moderator predicting Y. In this example, I'm going to add two covariates as either control or adjust or variables. But we're really interested in this interactive XM relationship. So for this example, <clears throat> what I'm going to use is um, a states data set that's built into R that has illiteracy as our independent variable. We're going to control for population and area uh, with the idea that maybe larger populations and more state area allows you to have more people which then allows you to have more maybe sports teams or other big industry business where people are making a lot of money because we're going to predict income okay. so we'd expect as illiteracy increases income would decrease uh, and our moderator variable is going to be murder so higher murder rates i might expect less income because people are going to move away from the city right because they'll have the money to move out of the city uh, so let's start with power. So for power, um, it, the question is like, how many IVs do I have usually? And so we're going to have our main four, illiteracy, population, area, and murder. But then you have to remember to include that interaction. So we are going to have five predictors. So let's pop over to our studio, have this example already built. I'm going to go down to the very bottom where I stuck power. So power requires a PWR library. Let's uh, clear all this out. <clears throat> Work with a clean interface here. So PWR. Now I want to, there's two ways to think about this. I can think about R squared increase or R squared overall. So you can test maybe for just the R squared that you're interested in, or you could test for the, um, the entire R squared considering all of the variables. So if I wanted to test for all of the variables, what I have here is correct. So I would maybe say, maybe let's say that R squared we expect to be 0 0.30 with all of those variables in there. So I convert that R squared to Cohen's F. Here I would fill in the UV as degrees of freedom model. So this case it's going to be five for all five of our predictors. Um, that's calculated by taking predictors um, it includes intercept minus one, so it's just the number of predictors. Our little V is null because that's what we're trying to figure out is the sample size. F squared is our converted Cohen's F. I'm using 0.05 and 0.8 is sort of industry standard in psychology, but you can change these to your SIG level and power you're interested in. And so if I run this particular one, <clears throat> I would only need 30 people. I'm sorry, 30 plus 5, so 35, because we need to add U and V together. The other way that I could do this is talk about the power of just the R squared for the um, interaction effect. So let's say I happen to know the interaction effect is, <coughs> excuse me, 0.11. Okay, that's the R squared, overall R squared for adding the interaction. Then I could test this with U of 1, because we're adding the interaction. Okay. So this would allow us to test just um, that one predictor, because that's the interesting one. Okay. So we'd use U of 1, because it's 1 for the interaction. And that suggests that we need 63 plus 1, so 64 people. Okay. So it kind of depends on if you want to do overall, like all the predictors predictors or just the addition of the interaction <clears throat> right so now if you don't have this library and you're brand new to us you can download and install the library you have to have the dev tools package the dev tools package is in CRAN so you can um, click on install and then type dev tools this package allows you to install you know, packages in progress from github <clears throat> and lots of other things but you would just run this to install the newest version. If you're 
keeping up with me week to week, um, you will want to install the new version because a new video means new updates. <laughs> If you want to look at um, kind of where we are and what we're doing, you can always go to GitHub. If you're a code person. If you're like, just show me the moderation, you can skip this part. But my username is Doom Lab. And if the internet isn't running super slow, <laughs> Uh, you can find this repository, which means this, this package we're working on here. Um, it's been really slow. Uh, and you can see that I've been working on this package uh, all together. You can actually see me, maybe, <laughs> if the internet weren't running so slow. But anyways, all right, so we would click on uh, Mimo Boot Art here. You can also just type that in directly to the <clears throat> browser. And the nice thing about the page is it explains a little bit of how to install it. We've already gone over this, but it also shows you where the examples are hidden on the OSF page um, and what I've been updating with each version. So this newest version includes two-way interactions for moderation, which is model one in process plugin. At the moment, I haven't made categorical interactions work quite yes, yet. It will run, but it will not be pretty. Um, I updated the data screening for all the previous analyses as well in case you have a categorical covariate. So I fixed that as well. <clears throat> so you can kind of keep up with me on what I'm doing in this package. All right, how do I make this work? So I'm gonna load the MIMO library. And remember, you can always click on it under packages to look at how each of these formulas work. So we're gonna do moderation one here. And it walks you through like what everything I'm about to talk about is. I'm gonna load the state's data set that's hidden in the background in R. Um, this is a matrix, so we're just gonna convert this to our normal data frame. Um, and the state's data set has a lot going on in it. So it's got population, income, illiteracy, life expectancy, murder rates, high school graduation, frost, which seems like a weird one, <laughs> and then area. Now, this is very similar to the mediation function. It just has less options because this is a little easier than the mediation options. Okay. So we're going to put in y as our dependent variable. It's income. So we put in the name of the column we're interested in, in quotes. X is illiteracy here. So it's the name of the column again. M for murder, which just makes me laugh. So moderator for our simple slopes. If you decide you want them the other way, switch X and M here. <clears throat> So whichever one you put in as M will create the simple slopes on that variable. So you get low, average, and high simple slopes, which I'll explain more in a minute, um, on the one you label as M. Any CVs you're interested in, in a concatenated um, vector. And then our DF for data frame um, is the state's data frame. Okay. I'm gonna save all that so I can view each piece one at a time. This week we won't have any problems. <laughs> so the first thing it does is actually runs data screening. At this point, you need to make sure that you've screened for <clears throat> uh, accuracy and missing data and dealt with missing data in whatever way you are interested in. Um, this will not screen those for you because it's too variable on what researchers are interested in, but it starts at outliers. So I'm going to kind of walk through this, assuming you understand the data screening procedure I've talked about before, but I have a whole series on this in R. If you want to learn more about why I'm doing all the steps I'm doing, just search data screening and R on my channel and you'll find a bunch of them. <clears throat> so let's look at outliers. It will run three outlier analyses for you and stick them on the end of your data set. Okay. Um, <clears throat> one thing we didn't do here is we also could have included, um, do this with out. The default for with out is true. Okay, you'll see this here in our um, description of what's going on. And that variable is whether or not you want to include outliers. So it automatically defaults to true. If you decide you want to exclude outliers, change that to false. And then you'll get a different set of output here. I can look at my outliers though by looking at the final data frame that it prints out for me. It calculates the number of Mahalanobis distance outliers I have, the number of leverage outliers. 
So I can tell that I have like five or six of those. Some of those bad boys is Alaska. Alaska is a particularly problematic because the population is small, but the um, murder rate is high. <laughs> so um, also our total outliers. So if we go two strikes, you're out. We have two that would be considered outliers. And those are Alaska and Louisiana. So for Alaska, it's probably because of the high income, low population and high murder rate. But for Louisiana, it's the high population and then high rates of everything else but income. So they're kind of the reverse. So they're on the extreme ends of income <clears throat> and the extreme ends of the other variables. So I could go back and rerun this without the outlier. So it would exclude the top two. I didn't in this case because these are states and this is real data. If these were participant pieces, you know I would have that out in a second. <laughs> but we just wanna give you back the data in case. So it will show you that um, entire data frame with the outlier information, um, even if you exclude them. The next thing you've got is multicollinearity. So this just shows you the correlation of the IVs. <clears throat> now, this is the correlation of the centered IVs. So what happens in the background is that it's gonna center your X and your M variables. And by centering, I mean it's going to take the, mean, the participant data minus the mean of that column. And it centers the data to control for multicollinearity and to control for um, uh, help you with the interpretation of the simple slope. So we'll get to here in a minute. Um, and so this is the pre-centered data. Oh, no, I'm sorry. On this data set, this is not centered. So this is the real data. Um, after data screening, it is all centered. So the centering happens after data screening. So these correlations here ignore the intercept. We want to look at um, any correlations that are uh, 0.7 to 0.9. Those are really problematic. So I'm going to ignore this first line. I can see that the um, illiteracy is highly correlated with the interaction, which isn't too surprising. <laughs> um, but the real issue here, if I find it, is going to be that <clears throat> murder and illiteracy are also highly correlated. <clears throat> There it is. Okay. And so we want to make sure that we don't have too high of correlations. Okay. Um, and so we want to, that's why we're going to center those variables. But otherwise, I don't have anything, except for the interaction, I don't have any, any real issues here. Okay. Let's look at linearity, our PP, our QQ plot here. And look how nice and beautiful that is. Everybody's pretty much right on the line, so we've got linearity here. Normalities pretty centered. So you want it centered over zero between two and two. It's a little skewed, a little positive skewed, but mostly pretty good. And then in here for homogeneity, we want the data centered between two and two in both directions approximately. And I'd say this is slightly problematic, um, mostly because the spread isn't totally even around two, but it's mostly okay. For homoscedasticity, oh, it's like a dancing octopus. I'm not good at making these pictures, but um, the issue is there's not very much data on the left and the right, and everybody's here in the middle. So I would say this is a slight problem with um, homogeneity and homoscedasticity. If you watch the SPSS video, essentially turn this on its side. So here are our two bad dots, and here's our reigning to the left. <clears throat> so I would say there are slight problems here, um, but since this is real state data, you would just state that there are those problems, not a whole lot you can do. Now if we get into the actual analysis, what's first thing that's going to happen is just you can look at the overall model, which is our average simple slopes, but this is where people want to know, is my interaction significant? And so we could report the uh, overall model statistics. And that's where we'd pull our F values here. So F is all going to be down here at the bottom. So it's 544. <clears throat> it's 10.30, <laughs> I guess. Not a lot of precision there. Um, P equals is less than 0.001. And we do R squared equals 0.54. <coughs> And then we could actually talk about each predictor one at a time. 
So if I wanted to talk about illiteracy, illiteracy, I could say B equals negative 114.78 T, 44 degrees of freedom, because it matches the overall F statistic here, equals, here's our T value here. Oops, got excited, put that on the wrong line. And then I managed to screw it up three times, so B equals 0 0.190. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. I could do that for each one. I won't bore you to death doing that for each one. But the interpretation for illiteracy is that it's not a significant predictor. Okay. Then I could look at murder, which is also not significant. I'm sorry, literacy was 0 0.508. I read the wrong line. It's here. Also not significant. Okay. Our covariates, we could talk about population, which is significant. So as um, population increases, income increases. Oh, a terrible spelling is out today. All right, so population is 0.03 here. So as population goes up, incre income also goes up area so as area increases <coughs> popular uh, income also increases right so more people more job types more money okay. and then last we could talk about that interaction so i'm gonna write that one out so our p value is negative 115 T is still 44, equals negative 3.36, our p-value is 0.002. Okay, so this is significant, but that's difficult to interpret. It's hard to know what 115 is, right? So instead, we would want to look at maybe the model for the low simple slopes, and I've included these so you can report the entire T value here. Um, won't write that out, but what you wanna look for is X because M is the slope we are manipulating. So we want to look at illiteracy. Okay, <clears throat> and so that's the hard part for people is that when you create these slopes, what's happening? Okay, we're not separating into groups. So I'm not partitioning the data into low, average, and high. So um, instead, what we're doing is we're like zooming in. So if you think about the scatter plot of the data, I'm zooming into the low group, I'm zooming into the average, and I'm zooming into the high. Okay. Um, and so the explanation of simple slopes I got from Cohen, Cohen, Aiken, and West, but lots of people talk about them this way. We're sort of um, changing the data so that we can see what's happening at each area of the data. And so when we manipulate those, we're creating slopes for low, average, and high on the X. Oh, so it's low, average, and high murder rates on illiteracy. And because this is difficult, I've created some output that hopefully will help you understand what's going on in your data set um, so you can learn how to write this better. But at low illiteracy here, or I'm sorry, at low murder, so low M, and that M stands for the moderator, not murder, but so it's low M. Um, what we see is illiteracy is not a predictor. <coughs> of income. Okay. Now one thing you'll notice is my F statistics have not changed. If they do, let me know. There's a bug in my code. Um, and most of the variables are also not going to change. And so what you should see is that murder stays the same, negative 35.91. Uh, 35.91. So some of these numbers are going to change. And basically it's illiteracy. So we've got 311. And then up here we had 114. So some numbers are going to change. Not all of them. Okay, And that's correct. Okay. At the high simple slopes, what we see is illiteracy is a predictor of income. So now illiteracy is negative 0 0.541, 541, and that is significant. Okay. None of the rest of the variables have changed. 
because what we're doing is we're just sort of manipulating where in the data we're looking. Uh, and that's where you could report all the t values for those. But I also included this interpretation. The cat function just prints this out nicely. There's nothing special about it. It's base, um, I mean base R, there's no extra package for it. But cat is like print this out in a nice way. And so what it does is it prints out the sort of, um, <clears throat> it doesn't tell you if it's significant or not, but it tells you what to think about when you think about these slopes. Okay, so at low levels of murder, for every unit increase in illiteracy, um, and it prints out mostly nicely. So if we zoom, pull this out here. So at low levels of murder, every unit increase in illiteracy predicts 311 units change in income. So what that means is that low levels of murder, illiteracy increasing predicts increasing income, which is a little weird. Right? You would think that illiteracy rates would decrease income. We've already decided that that was not significant. At average levels of murder, every unit increase in illiteracy predicts a negative change in income. So for income, uh, illiteracy increasing, income is decreasing because it's negative. <clears throat> also not significant. At high levels of murder, every unit increase in illiteracy predicts a very big negative change in income, and this one was significant. So this kind of helps you interpret. I mean, I wouldn't write this this way in your reports, especially if you're doing like APA style, but this to me helps just like what the heck is going on. So it, it will explain to you kind of what those changes are. And it also allows you to make sure you're pulling the right numbers from the saved summary outputs. So you know that you can match your B values or your coefficients. Remember in R it's listed as estimate um, to, the right t to the right places. Um, that sort of thing has always helped me. <clears throat> and so essentially, um, one thing that happens that I get a lot of questions about is what does it mean if the interaction is significant, <coughs> excuse me, but none of the simple slopes are significant? Okay. So what that implies is that the uh, simple slopes are changing different, right? So we're going from uh, positive 311 to negative 114 to negative 541. Those are different numbers, but that the main effect of x to y is not significant. Then you have to decide for yourself how important that is, how um, if that's interesting information or not, because you're saying X doesn't predict Y, but at these different levels of M, it's at least different. Um, it might be a power issue. So you kind of have to think about what that implies for your specific research question. But what it like mathematically means is that the slopes are actually different, but X to Y, uh, X does not predict Y. <clears throat> an example of that in an ANOVA is a perfect interaction where there are no main effects of the main variables, but that the um, interaction is significant. Sometimes I tell people to switch X and M if it see if it makes more sense. Okay. All right, now I do have a graph included. Um, it's built in ggplot2. Um, it's a dot plot of um, X to Y, and then it's drawn all of the uh, simple slopes on here. Now, uh, this does not include any of the CVs, so it might be better if the plot were um, predictive values to Y. Um, don't have that at the moment, but right now it's X to Y, it, uh, but the slopes do include the CVs. So this graphs the um, negative slope for you based on that coefficient. Uh, so it's positive here. You can see that the average murder rate is negative and then that the high murder rates are even more negative. So the interpretation here is that as murder rates increase, the effect of illiteracy to income becomes more negative. So this fan effect going down here. Right? So as murder's increasing, where dot, our dot lines are getting uh, going from small dots to large dashes, um, the effect of illiteracy on income is getting more negative. Okay? And then we got our like one crazy Alaska out here. Okay, that might actually not be Alaska, but our, this outlier might be worth excluding and seeing what happens. <clears throat> okay. 
Now, if you wanted to uh, manipulate that, like you like my plot, but you don't love my plot, you can always run the name of the function without <clears throat> any of the uh, parentheses. And this will show you the code that the function is running in the background, which I've always used to kind of figure out what the heck people are doing. Uh, and the ggplot starts here under plot sim. So you can kind of look at how we're creating those plots. This is kind of for ggplot, people who are good at ggplot. Um, but it's a, a dot plot with lines added, basically. Okay. And so all that together is how we would run a simple moderation with covariates. We're gonna work on categorical moderation next week. So come back for that. And you can find all of this on GitHub and let me know if you have questions. And I think that's it. So enjoy the moderation. It's now available for continuous predictors in Mimo Boot R.